Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. So this tutorial is really aimed to help people that are using this application called Snagit and it's really a Snagit is really just a video screen capture application. So I'm actually using Snagit right now to capture this video. It's an application that you can download and purchase on the internet and it allows you to do video capture for tutorials like this. And I had a few problems um, that I experienced when I was using video editing software after I've captured the video. And I just want to explain how I managed to find a fix for that. Whether it's the right way to do it or not, I'm not entirely sure, but it works for me and it resolved my problem. And I want to explain what problem I had and hopefully it will help a few other people out there to get around this problem. So at the moment, um, I'm capturing this video and I've got this folder here for a tutorial that I'm working on at the moment. And I've already pre-captured this video here and with Snagit it exports it as an mp4 file. But while it's capturing the video, you'll notice that it captures it at a very low frame rate, frame rate around 9 frames to 15 frames a second, which is way too too slow. It's, you know, normally video is running at 30 frames a second or um, 24 frames a second, something like that. And this low frame rate was causing me a problem. I'm going to try and explain what the problem is. Um, I'm using this application called Movie Edit Pro and quite a lot of people are probably familiar with this application and when I was dragging and dropping this video into Movie Edit Pro um, I was able to see the video and I was able to scrub through it and edit it and when I play it in here the audio was running out of sequence to the video and I found out that, that it was really down to this frame rate it was a frame rate problem because um, Magix is expecting the video frame rate to be around 30 frames a second and I was compositing this video with other videos so I like a little intro video that starts at the beginning and you know all of the frame rates were just a bit mixed up and it just wasn't working for me when I exported this video afterwards the uh, video and the audio were out of sequence and that was causing me a real problem so I tried to look for a solution to that problem and I managed to find one. So I'm not going to save this, I'm just going to close this and I'm going to explain what I did. So the first thing I did is I went onto the internet and I downloaded this piece of software, it's called Handbrake. Uh, so you go to Google, type in Handbrake and it's open source video transcoder. So it allows you to do some um, transcoding on the video. So I downloaded this application, it's free to download, so you can go ahead and download it for Windows. I'm not sure if there's a Mac version but I know there's a Windows version. And then I'm going to show you how I got this video to become 30 frames a second. In reality, it's not really 30 frames a second because the original source was never captured at 30 frames. But you can almost like upscale your video, you could say, to, to, to make it look like it's 30 frames a second. It probably plugs in extra frames in between to make it exactly 30 frames a second. Which um, then when I drag and drop that video into the movie editing software, um, the audio and the video were running in sequence perfectly and I think that might help a lot of people that are experiencing this problem as well so after you've downloaded the software what you need to do is open up Handbrake and in Handbrake I'm going to click on source and I'm going to open up the file so I'm just going to go to my desktop and I'm working on this one here so I'm going to select this file and it's going to do some work on it but the settings that I'm using are quite important so here if you take note of these settings I'm, I'm capturing it as um, full HD resolution so it's 1920 by 1080 so I'm making sure that the aspect ratio stays the same if you just keep a note of these settings when you do your um, picture size settings then this should work for you this should work for you well and also just set all the croppings to zero amount so that if it's set to any sort of croppings make sure that you set it to zero amount so there's no cropping on the video that's what you want uh, I'm not too familiar with all of these options here but I've left them as these these defaults and it seems to work fine for me so if you just keep a little note of this I'll leave it on the screen for a second you can just follow these exact same settings uh, if you're running if you're capturing that at a lower resolution then you may need to adjust the width and um, but always keep the height consistent it's just the width that you need to make sure you get right if you're, if you're recording at a lower resolution. The other thing I did was I go to video and in video 
I set it to H.264, which is the HD uh, encoding. And in the frame rate, I set it to 30 frames a second and I leave it as constant. I don't really mess around with these settings down here. And then this quality, I set it to its maximum, so it's lossless. So there, there'll be less you know, pixelation when it finishes off the video. And that's all I do. So set the picture, set the video, and then go ahead and start it. You can also add many of them to the queue. So you can, you can plug it into a queue if you want to. And then you could add more videos into the queue and encode loads of them all in one go. You just go and open up another file, do the same settings on that file and add it to the queue. Make sure you do the settings. Every time you open up, open up a new file, you add a new source, you have to go and put these settings correctly. Otherwise you're gonna have that problem. So if I just show the queue, I've got the video in here and I can start encoding that. It's gonna take a bit of time, but you'll see hopefully that it's averaging 30 to 30, you know, over 30 frames a second. And that's gonna help you to get the audio and the video in sync if you're using um, a capture piece of capture software that's running at a much lower frame rate. That worked for me and you can see a lot of the YouTube videos that I've put up, um, a lot of tutorials that I've put up on YouTube and you can see the audio and the video are in sync. So this is how I got around that problem. So I hope this tutorial helps you as well. And if you've got any problems, if you're not too sure what I've done, then feel free to post a message on Facebook, on YouTube or on my Google Plus account and I try and give you a few little tips or try and help you to get this working uh, for yourself as well. So this really did work for me and I hope it works for you as well to help you get your audio and video in sync when you're using uh, Movie Edit Pro. Okay, that's all for this tutorial and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.